Dear students, in this video, we are going to see the concepts needed for developing an application using inheritance. In this video, we are going to see the concepts of inheritance and then method overriding, super keyword and the dynamic method dispatch. So to start with, what does mean by inheritance? Inheritance is nothing but deriving the properties of base class into a derived class. So the base class can be called as parent class or super class and also the derived class can be called as child class or subclass. To implement the inheritance in Java, we are using the extends keyword. There are basically four types of inheritance available in Java. That is single inheritance, multi-level inheritance, hierarchical inheritance and hybrid inheritance. Java does not support multiple inheritance. And moving with method overriding. So what is mean by method overriding? Method overriding represents same function name with same signature that is the return type, the number of argument also same for the function. But one function is reside in the base class and the another function is reside in the derived class. And next is the super keyword. So super keyword also mainly used with the inheritance. There are two uses for the super keyword. The first use is, it is used to initialize the base class constructor through the derived class constructor. And also it will invoke the overridden method in the derived class using the super keyword. So then dynamic method dispatch. So whenever you having the method overriding concept, so this dynamic method dispatch will work to perform the runtime polymorphism. That is, we create the superclass reference variable in order to refer the subclass object. So now we will see all those concepts in a programming environment. The programming environment I have used is the Eclipse environment. I have created a class file which is the inheritdemo.java file. So first I am going to create a base class. So I am going to create a base class called as shape class. And then I am going to apply the concept of hierarchical inheritance. So I am going to create two child class, that is two derived class. So one is the rectangle class and another one is the triangle class. So to start with the class, I am going to create the base class first, class shape. So that I need to have two parameters. One is the side of the shape and also color of the shape. So I am going to create with int side and next thing is private string and the color. Then I am going to create a constructor for it. So constructor, I am going to initialize the data members, the side and the color. So si equal to yes. And then color is equal to C. So after creating the constructor, now I am going to create my derived class. So my derived class, which use the keyword extends, which is inheriting the properties of shape class. And here the rectangle class have the length and breadth. So private, int, length and the breadth. Here also I am going to create a constructor for the rectangle class. So rectangle, I need to have the length and the breadth. So length will be initialized with L, breadth will be initialized with B. So defaultly, when you have the derived class constructor, it internally call your base class constructor. So to call the base class constructor, we are using the super keyword. So it represents we are invoking the base class constructor. Super represents the base class constructor with an empty argument. So we don't have any constructor with an empty argument. So I am going to create one constructor with an empty argument. So now same thing, I am going to create another one class which is a triangle class which is extends from the shape class and this have two parameters the first one is the base and the height now I am going to again create a constructor so triangle 
base of the triangle and the height of the triangle which will be initialized to base and the height. So here also I have because defaultly it will call whenever I have a derived class constructor defaultly it will call the base class constructor that is an empty constructor in the base class. So internally it is having the super keyword. So if you are having that internally it will invoke the base class constructor. So now we have a base class. We have two derived class. In order to have the inheritance concept, we have used the extends keyword. And this type of inheritance we implemented now is hierarchical inheritance. That is one base class which will be derived to two derived classes, rectangle class and the triangle class. And now the next job is we need to create the object. So whenever you have the inheritance concept, you create the object of your derived class. So here my derived class is the rectangle class R is equal to new rectangle. So also you create the object inside your main. So what I want to do is whenever I create a rectangle class object, I need to initialize the side, color, and also the length and breadth of the rectangle. So as you know from the program, the color and the side is available in the base class. It can be initialized through the base class constructor. The length and the breadth is available in the derived class. So that will be initialized through the derived class. But when I create an object, I need to pass all the four information. That is the side, the color and also the length and the breadth. So when I pass it, I don't have a four argument constructor, so it will get an error. So when I pass the parameter through the object creation, I need to change my constructor also to receive this four arguments. So what I have to do is, I will just initialize the side and also I will initialize the color. So these two information actually belong to my base class and these two information belong to my derived class. So using the super keyword, since you know one of the use of the super keyword is you can invoke your base class constructor through the derived class constructor. So if I'm not having any empty constructor internally it will call the super keyword to call the empty constructor but now I have the four argument constructor and also I have one two argument constructor in my base class so this two argument constructor I want to initialize through my derived class constructor so my derived class is rectangle I have these four information Using this constructor, I want to initialize the base class constructor also. So the first two members belong to the base class. So using the super keyword, I will pass these two members to my super class. And these two members belongs to my derived class. So this should be a first line, first line inside your derived class constructor. So if I try to put some other place, Okay, then it will throw me an error. So it should be the first statement inside the constructor. The super keyword should be the first statement inside a constructor. So same thing, I am going to create a next class, that is next class object, that is the triangle. Triangle T is equal to new triangle. And I need to pass the side of the triangle and the color of the triangle and followed by the base and the height. So base and the height. So again, this needs four arguments, but in my triangle class, I have only a two argument constructor. So I need to initialize my base class member through the derived class constructor. So I'm passing the side and also I'm passing the color. And these two data members belong to my base class and these two data members belong to my derived class. So now what I have to do, the first two data members I need to pass to my base class constructor using the super keyword. So using the super keyword, I am passing the side and the color to my base class. 
super keyword is now used to invoke the base class constructor through the derived class constructor. So now this is ready. So I have created my base class having two derived class by using the extends keyword created the rectangle class and the triangle class and I have created the object for the derived class passing the argument for the base class and also derived class. So whenever you create an object it will go to the constructor. So through the derived class constructor you are using the super keyword and you are trying to initialize the base class constructor. And now we are going to add a method called as display. So in the base class, I am going to add a method called as display. I am going to add the side, number of sides I want to print. And also I want to print the color. So I have an empty space. Then I am going to display the color. So as you know, Inheritance represent deriving the base class properties into a derived class. So using the derived class object, you can invoke the base class members and also derived class members. So by using the object of the derived class, you can access the data members of your derived class. And from your base class, whoever members are public. So that public members, you can access through your derived class object because the public members are inherited inside your derived class. So using the derived class object, you can access the public members of your base class also. So now I have a display method. So using this display method, by using the derived class object, I'm calling the display method. And also I'm calling the display method for the derived class object T. So when I run it, the display method of my base class get invoked since the base class members are public members of the base class are derived into the derived class. So using the rectangle class object, I can access the display method of my base class by having the argument of foresight and the color is rectangle and also using the display method through the derived class object for the triangle T, I can have the side is 3 and the color is blue. So now I am going to add some methods for my derived class. So for my rectangle class, I am going to add a method called as area. So I am going to calculate the area of the rectangle. So area of the rectangle, I am going to add with length into breadth. And same thing, I am going to have the calculation for the area in the triangle class. So area... I need to have the area of the triangle. So area of the triangle is half into BH. So I'm going to add with 0.5 into base into height. So this is, I have created two methods for my derived class. So using again my derived class object, I'm going to access the area of the rectangle. And here I am going to access the area of the triangle. So now you run your program. So you got your sides for the rectangle and also sides for the triangle and the corresponding area of the rectangle and the area of the triangle. So we have seen now how to create an inheritance and we have implemented the hierarchical inheritance and we have used the super keyword and we have initialized the base class constructor through the derived class constructor. So whenever you have the inheritance concept, create the object for the derived class. Using the derived class constructor, by using the super keyword, you can invoke the base class constructor through your derived class constructor. And now we are going to see the method overriding. Method overriding means same function with same signature but one function is reside in the base class and another function is reside in the derived class. So I have a display method in my base class. And now I am going to add a display method in my derived class. So void display. So you can have it here. I am a rectangle. 
same thing i am going to add a display method in the triangle so display i am triangle okay so previously you know that whenever you call the display method we have only one display method which is available in the base class so using the derived class object we have access the public method which is available in the base class because we have inherited the base class members into the derived class so by using the derived class object i have access the base class method and also i have access the own methods of the derived class so now what happens i have a display method in the base class display method in the corresponding derived classes also so now when i call the display method you can just check with the output what it is happening now you see the display method of the corresponding derived class got invoke it not invoking the base class display method now it is invoking the derived class display method what is the reason the reason is now we have the concept of method over riding what is method overriding when i have two functions with the same name same signature one is in the base class one is in the derived class when i invoke that method using the derived class object the base class method get hidden my derived class method get override and that method only displayed in the output that is called as method overriding now you think that i want to call my base class display method also so what is the solution so you know the solution you can use the super keyword to invoke the overridden method of your base class inside your derived class so what i have to do inside my derived class i have a display method and in that display method i just again use the super keyword and then i will call the display method so now when i create the object of the derived class and call the display the display method of the corresponding class that is my rectangle class get invoked within that we will call the super keyword to invoke the base class of that rectangle class display method so now it will come to the shape class and display the value available in the base class so same thing i can have it here super dot display so now you execute the program we we'll call the rectangle class display and within that it will invoke the overridden method available in the base class using the super keyword so now it is invoking the overridden method that is one of the use of the super keyword and another one use of the super keyword is invoke the base class constructor so one of the uses invoking the base class constructor through the derived class constructor and another one uses invoking the overridden method available in the base class through the derived class so now we have the next concept called as dynamic method dispatch so dynamic method dispatch will work along with the method overriding the other name for dynamic method dispatch is called as runtime polymorphism so how this dynamic method dispatch is working if i want to use the dynamic method dispatch you need to create the object reference for the base class not the object it have only the object reference so the object reference you assign the object of your derived class so now s is the object reference of the base class and that having the control of the object of your derived class so now using this object reference you can call the display method so now this display method will invoke the display method of the rectangle class so you can just run and check yes we are having the display method of the rectangle class so run time it will decide which overridden method 
need to be called. So now S is the object reference of the base class, but during the runtime, it having the object of the rectangle class. So when I call the display method, now S is referring to the object of the rectangle class. So it is invoking the display method of the rectangle class. So can I access the area method of the rectangle class? No. As I told, this will work only for the method overriding. But area method is available only in the rectangle class, which is not overridden in your base class. So the area method will not be accessed through the object reference of your base class. And same thing, if I want to invoke the display method of the triangle class, I will create again. I have the object reference of the base class already. So during the runtime, I am trying to assign the object of the derived class rectangle. And now I call the display method. So during the runtime, it will resolve that the object S yes, holding the object of the triangle class. So it will invoke the display method of the triangle class. So run it, I can have the triangle class. Maybe you think that you want to access the display method of the shape class itself. Then what you have to do, you need to create another one object for the shape class. Create the object for the shape class. And now the object reference, so this is called as your AC class object reference. So dynamically during the runtime, you are assigning the object and you are invoking the overridden method. So now I want to invoke the display method of the base class through this object reference using the concept of runtime polymorphism. So I am trying to assign S is equal to S. So now I am calling the display method. So now this display method belongs to the shape class. So this video we have seen how to create an application with inheritance and we have implemented the hierarchical inheritance concept with one base class and two derived class and inheritance concept implemented using the keyword extends and we have seen the uses of the super keyword. Using the super keyword, you can initialize the base class constructor through the derived class constructor and also you can invoke the overridden method of the base class from the derived class. And also, you know, what is meant by method overriding? That is the same function name with same signature, but one method is available in the base class, one method is available in the derived class. And the last one is dynamic method dispatch, which is mainly related with the method overriding. So during the runtime, you want to resolve the problem of method overriding. The problem, this will be called as runtime polymorphism. That is by creating a superclass reference, you can refer the overridden methods of your subclass. So that will be resolved during the runtime. Thank you.